garbage. Absolute garbage. It is extremely rare for me to get angry about what some doofus in the mainstream media says, especially when that doofus is a woke welfare collector working at the worldwide leader in woke ESPN. But yesterday afternoon, yesterday afternoon, I was pissed off. I was angry. This is what J.J. Reddick was complaining about earlier in the week. It is no longer up for debate. ESPN's coverage of the NBA Trash! If I'm Adam Silver, I'm not even allowing ESPN to bid on the broadcast rights for my league. The NBA, they would be better off giving their broadcast rights to Lifetime or maybe even the Yentas on The View. At this point, ESPN has become an embarrassment. This is the same network that calls Mina Kimes an NFL analyst. This is the same network that fills NBA halftime shows with a panel of women who have never played in the league. What the hell can Malika Andrews tell me about what's going on in an NBA locker room during halftime? What can Malika Andrews tell me about the mindset of NBA players? How can a WNBA dump diver teach me anything about the NBA? If I threw a party and I needed to know the most efficient way to clean up the garbage, I would contract the services offered by the WNBA dump. When I am looking for analysis of the NBA, dump divers aren't qualified to give it to me. The face of embarrassment when it comes to ESPN's horrific coverage of the NBA is none other than Captain Doofus himself, Stephen A. Smith. As you guys know, I am a die-hard fan of the New Orleans Pelicans. I eat, sleep, and breathe this team. This channel's my number one priority, other than my family, of course, but slightly below the channel here on YouTube is my Pelicans. I never miss a game. 82 games in the regular season, I watch every single one of them. I don't mind the national media criticizing my team as long as the criticism is valid. You want to call out Willie Green for his stubbornness and his outright refusal to stick up for Zion Williamson when the worst officials in professional sports suddenly swallow their whistle every time he drives the lane? I'm all for it. The fight that happened last night in New Orleans, that fight was a direct result of the shit officiating in the NBA. You want to criticize Brandon Ingram for refusing to shoot threes? I'm all for it. You want to call out Trey Murphy for suddenly losing his ability to make shots? Right now, Trey Murphy, he couldn't shoot a cheeseburger into the ocean-sized mouth of the Lizzo. Criticism of Trey Murphy? All for it. Earlier in the season, Charles Barkley's Shaq, they were criticizing Zion Williamson for coming into the regular season out of shape. I didn't have a problem with that. Going into training camp in September, Zion looked like he had spent the summer with Lizzo. He came into camp with dozens of additional pounds of body positivity. Translation, he was gigantic. There's no excuse for being out of shape, but the vast majority of national media criticism, at least when it comes to my Pelicans, I write it off as ignorance. These people don't watch my team. The only teams that ESPN cares about are the Lakers and the Rainbow Warriors. The other 28 teams are completely irrelevant to ESPN unless they're hosting a Pride Night celebration. So I ignore their criticism because I know they don't know shit about fuck when it comes to my Pelicans. What Stephen A. Smith said yesterday about Zion Williamson, that was not criticism. It wasn't ignorance. It wasn't another case of Stephen A. Smith being lazy and uninformed. This was intentional. This was personal. I don't know why, but Stephen A. seems to have this weird obsession with Zion Williamson. I don't know if something happened behind the scenes or maybe he wants Zion to play for the Knicks and he doesn't know how to properly seduce him to New York City. You know how when a little boy has a crush on a girl and he doesn't know how to show it instead of giving her love notes, instead of opening her trapper keeper for her, he throws dirt and rocks at her as a weird way of flirting. And the girl... She just continues to ignore him. That's what is going on with Stephen A. Smith. He keeps criticizing Zion Williamson. He keeps throwing rocks at him. Small rocks, of course. Stephen A. doesn't have the strength to throw stones. In his own feminine way, he keeps throwing these pebbles at Zion, and Zion continues to ignore his dumb ass. Yesterday morning, Stephen A. was talking with Lieutenant Doofus Mike Greenberg. Greeny, greeny. 
they were attempting to talk about the NBA. Now, obviously, this conversation was a struggle. Mike Greenberg doesn't know shit about the NBA, and Stephen A's knowledge of the league has dropped significantly over the last few years. This is the same Stephen A who claims to have averaged one and a half points per game and only played in one game. Math majors at Woke U, they are still trying to figure out that calculation. The conversation, it shifted to my Pelicans, who have been one of the hottest teams in the league during the month of February. Instead of receiving basketball analysis, instead of criticizing the team for their tendency to struggle offensively at times during games, Stephen A., he decided that he was going to identify as an expert in body positivity and start analyzing Zion Williamson's weight. According to Stephen A. Smith, Zion Williamson is fat. Now, before I show you this garbage, let me show you something else first. I want you to compare these two graduates of body positivity camp. You tell me which one took camp seriously and lost some of their body positivity and which one didn't. This is a picture of Zion Williamson taken the other night. Right now, hell, right now, I think Zion is in the best shape of his career. Now, compare this to this. One of these looks like a professional basketball player. The other looks like a tugboat. One of these dunks basketballs. The other dunks three dozen donuts. When Zion enters the arena, he rides around on a golf cart. When Lizzo enters the arena, she rides around on a forklift. I wanted to make sure we all had a clear understanding of what a professional athlete looks like and what someone with a gargantuan amount of body positivity looks like. Watch for yourself. As Stephen A. Smith brilliantly displays the type of NBA coverage you can expect to get at ESPN. Zion Williamson, it's about how many burgers he's eating and whether or not he's going to be in shape or is he going to keep eating McDonald's and have chefs clamoring for him to come to their restaurants. That's what he has to prove, that the chefs don't love him any longer, okay? That he's committed to playing basketball and being in shape. <laughs> What the hell was so funny about that? Why is Mike Greenberg sitting there grinning like some doofus at a Rodney Carrington show? Did I miss something? Was Stephen A. having his audition to take over for Jim Kimmel? Maybe I was wrong the other day because if that was his audition, if that was his best comedy... Stephen A. is not qualified to host a late night show. Why does it seem like everyone at ESPN is afraid to stand up to Stephen A. Smith? I mean, there was nothing funny about what he said. There was nothing analytical about it. He wasn't breaking down Zion's game, which, by the way, has been on point. Instead of doing his job, Stephen A. showed us how lazy he is and how he doesn't watch the NBA. We already knew he didn't watch the NFL. Now he has proven that he doesn't watch the NBA either. All he did was repeat what he said back in December. And look, the only problem I had back in December was the fact that all the allegations were proven to be false. Stephen A. was just doing what he does best and making shit up. But back then, the sentiment of his argument had merit. Back then, Zion was out of shape. That is no longer the case. Like I said, Zion, I think, is in the best shape of his NBA career. Been healthy all season. This kid has been busting his ass. He's trying to eliminate the stain that the national media has put on his reputation. A reputation that he deserved. Past tense. Deserved. Zion no longer deserves it. Every facet of his game has improved. Well, KC, that's not true. All of his stats are down this season. Yeah, uh, I don't look at stats. I watch actual games. If you want to hear about meaningless stats, go watch Mina Kimes. Hey, KC, it's me, Mina Kimes. Did you know that on third down with five minutes to go in the first quarter, when Aquarius aligns with Pluto and it's 42 degrees on the third Sunday in November, with the wind blowing at five miles an hour, that Dak Prescott is the best quarterback in the NFL in this situation? Oh, well, that's great, Mina. Did you know that during the month of January when the playoffs had begun that Dak Prescott is the worst quarterback in the NFL?
This is why I don't watch ESPN. Maybe Dan Lebatard is right. For years now, Dan Lebatard has accused Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless of ruining sports media. Maybe he's right. Maybe he's right. Zion Williamson, though, he might be playing in a small market. The Pels fan base might be small when compared to teams like the Rainbow Warriors or the Celtics and the Lakers. But one thing about the fan base in New Orleans... We're committed and we're loyal. Stephen A. was absolutely demolished yesterday on Twitter, but the biggest hit came from the Pelicans themselves. Their social media team, they put together a compilation of, of some of Stephen A.'s greatest athletic achievements. Watch for yourself. Now, this man was a bona fide scrub. He can't play. No disrespect whatsoever, but I'm sorry to call, tell everybody the truth. The man cannot play the game of basketball. He has small hands. He can't catch the ball. He's got bad feet. He can't really move, even though he's mobile. Doesn't really know what he's doing. Doesn't have a post move that he, he puts to memory that he can do two times in a row. He has no game whatsoever. Plays no defense. The truth is ESPN and the national media, they want Zion Williamson out of New Orleans. I get so tired of this false narrative that Zion is unhappy in New Orleans. That's another example of the analysis that Stephen A. provides. Zion's lazy because he's not happy. He's distracted by all the restaurants in New Orleans. That's why he should be playing in New York City where there are far less distractions. During press conferences after games, Zion, he'll often wear shirts that honor past legends from New Orleans. A couple of weeks ago, he wore a shirt with the face of Drew Brees. After that, he wore a shirt from Master P and No Limit Records. Does that sound like someone who is unhappy in New Orleans? My boy Retro Pels on Twitter, he created something called the Anthem. After each Pelicans win, not uncommon for Antonio Daniels to say on the broadcast, Hey, Retro Pels, hit that Anthem! Since January, Zion Williamson, he's been liking the post every time Retro Pels hits the anthem on Twitter. Does that sound like someone who isn't happy in New Orleans? After he was verbally torn to shreds, Stephen A. tried to backtrack a bit. Hey friends, I love New Orleans. I love Willie Green. Let's hold hands again. Um, yeah. Fuck off. But give me your thoughts on this. Stephen A. gets destroyed by the Pelicans fan base for an absolutely lazy, for lack of a better word, analysis of Zion Williamson. On a network that is supposedly dedicated to diversity, equity, and inclusion, Stephen A. decides to be a fattest. What he really did was show everyone that ESPN's coverage of the NBA is trash. I hope Adam Silver gives the broadcast rights to NBC. I mean, please! Please, give your broadcast rights to a network that knows how to cover sports because ESPN no longer knows how to do that. If you're looking for passionate woke hugs, if you're looking for a recipe for the grilled wiener, ESPN's the place for you. If you are looking for sports coverage, you'd be better off watching the Yentas on The View. This network is trash, but give me your thoughts. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.